ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and we are here today to talk a little bit about Destiny because today, of course, was the official reveal stream by Bungie for Rise of Iron, the latest Destiny expansion and potentially the final Destiny expansion before the release of Destiny 2. I want to say first and foremost, everyone at Bungie, Deej for hosting it, uh, you know, they had the game director, the producer show up as well. Awesome job, awesome job. The stream was incredibly enjoyable to watch, as has many of the past Destiny streams been. Uh, you know, Bungie's really learned a lot about communicating with the community, how to put on streams, and they put on some of the best developer streams in the business without a doubt, and Rise of Iron's reveal stream was no exception. Outstanding. I have to say, Deej is, is looking like a grizzled vet over there. You know, he's kind of he's kind of got me going on with the think I'm gonna grow back my beard type thing and he's just looking a little bit more hardcore I think his time in the trenches has has served him well unless it's really just him actually starting to look older because of all the stress but I hope it's the other way around Deej always seems like he's having a really great time and while I know game development and everything surrounding it is without a doubt stressful as are most of the things worthwhile in life I should point out uh, I think you know Deej looked a, looked a little bit hard and he's got the sort of big boss look going on so anyways, guys, enough talk about Deej. Let's actually talk about Rise of Iron and Destiny. There was a lot of details revealed during the stream. We got to see a lot of new stuff, all of which looked insanely exciting. I have to say the big thing for me is the overarching theme and atmosphere surrounding the Rise of Iron expansion. And I know a lot of people are into this because a lot of people really like the whole story behind the Iron Lords. And that is very much what we're going to be seeing a focus of inside of this expansion. But first, let's talk about the release date, the pricing, and the platforms that Rise of Iron will be available on. Rise of Iron is going to be releasing September 20th this year on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 only at a price point of $30. I'm more than happy with that price point. The Taken King was an exceptional expansion, and when I think of Destiny, I think of the Taken King. You know, I don't think of all of the issues that I had in between with Destiny's growing pains. I think of how amazing the Taken King was and how many great memories I forged on Dreadnought with my fire team and even alone. Um, and uh, Dreadnought, to me, to still to this day, is one of the best play areas that Bungie has designed for Destiny. I really enjoyed the Dreadnought. And overall, like I said, when I think of Destiny, I think of the Taken King now, and which is why I have no trouble recommending Destiny in its Taken King variant to people when they ask me whether or not they should get into Destiny. So in case you're going to ask that question down in the comment section below, you haven't played Destiny, Rise of Iron's coming out, you have an Xbox One or PlayStation 4, do yourself a favor, pick up Destiny this summer, grab some friends, you can probably get it on Amazon for next to nothing with the expansions included. Get yourself a new character ready to go for Rise of Iron. I think there's a lot of awesome game to play there, and as I said, Destiny is in the best condition it has been in ever. It's definitely worth playing right now. Xbox One and PlayStation 4 only. That's right. They're finally leaving the last generation of consoles behind. Legacy is going away. And if you want to continue to play Destiny in the Rise of Iron, you'll need to upgrade to an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4. Now, of course, this is going to leave some people with a sour face, but it's time to move on. And to be frank, I was one of those people from day one who was shocked that they even decided to support the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 for two reasons. Number one, I felt that they were already outdated at that point, and there's no doubt that developing for four consoles at that point in time was additional stress, regardless of additional development teams brought on to develop for those platforms. And while both the 360 and PlayStation 3 version turned out amazing, it just, you know... Secondly, the fact that eventually they were going to have to sever ties. This is something I've been very vocal about on the channel. It's time to move forward. And I said numerous times, if they make another Destiny expansion after the Taken King, before the release of Destiny 2, they need to leave behind the 360 and the PlayStation 3. It's time to move forward and look at the benefits that leaving those two consoles behind can bring. Now, they didn't talk about any of this stuff. You know, a lot of people have been screaming for the idea of 60 FPS, uh, if that's something that's possible without having to develop on the previous gen consoles. I don't know if that's so much the case. I think there's a lot of other issues possibly restricting them from 60 FPS. I don't think we'll be seeing that with Rise of Iron. In fact, I guarantee to some degree that we won't be seeing that with Rise of Iron, but Destiny 2, who knows? All I know is that at the end of the day, those resources can now be put towards making the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 version as best as they possibly can be, and any restrictions set by having to develop on the previous platforms will now be removed. It's pretty much a best-case scenario for the franchise moving forward. 
a uh, very smart decision by Bungie to do so now before they have to wait any longer. Those of you out there who are still gaming on last generation consoles, I understand it's a big purchase to move forward, but the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 are cheaper than ever, and I imagine with the holidays coming up, there's a good chance you'll be able to get yourself an amazing deal. Now is the time to consider upgrading. And if you're a big Destiny fan, you know, this might just be enough to make that happen. If not, I firmly believe that most people are probably already upgraded or not playing Destiny and not concerned anyways. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'd really like to hear your position, where you're at, how that decision affects you moving forward. So let's talk about the overarching story that is going to exist inside of Rise of Iron because they've detailed this pretty effectively with the trailer and also everything that the fine folks at Bungie talked about during the stream. So if we look to the past, the Iron Lords protected the last remaining city from any threat, specifically from a threat known as the Technological Plague at one point, also known as SIVA. Now they actually battled this plague and all of them except Lord Saladin would sacrifice themselves to save the last city. Hopefully, in their eyes, locking away SIVA, the Technological Plague, to never see it return again. Now in the trailer we see Lord Saladin with his wolves patrolling the wall only to realize that the plague has indeed been released and is being used by the Fallen. So that is the story this time around. The Fallen have gained access to SIVA and are using it to further modify themselves. Now of course this makes sense in the story because the damn Fallen already augment themselves. They're a bunch of freaking splicers, man. They're like those people you first meet when you get into Bioshock and they start clawing at your thing and they're like, rawr, rawr. they're like that. That's basically the Fallen. They're really good at that. So their splicers have been able to take SIVA and use it to further augment and genetically modify the Fallen. We've got dregs walking on peg legs and crazy, you know, massive Fallen bosses that we're gonna be fighting with new weapons. Of course, this is a really smart move by Bungie because it takes an old enemy and once again, just like they did with the Taken variants of the Cabal and the Fallen and so on, it makes them anew. So Bungie did mention new new uh, Fallen types that we're going to have to deal with, new weapon types. You know, the Fallen like to tinker. They've made things like the Shanks and, you know, all the weird little constructs they build. So who knows what else they'll build with the technology behind SIVA. I like this too. A technological plague. Something just sounds so wicked cool about that. However, I do want to point out a bit of a comparison that I think many of us are making, especially those of us who are Halo fans. You heard the story, right? They sacrificed themselves to save the people from a technological plague, the Forerunners, and the Flood anyone. Kind of a similar situation, like in the comparisons there. Obviously not trying to say that in any sort of a negative way. Just thought it was funny to see what was going on there. I, for one, am very excited to check out and combat the new Fallen. I think they look amazing, and I think, as I said, that's a big theme with the Rise of Iron. All of the footage that we saw is taking us to new locations or locations that have been made in new. The overall atmosphere looks incredible. I love, you know, the snowstorm type setting, something I've really wanted to take part in. Uh, pretty much since day one with Destiny, since we saw a lot of, you know, cool little bits and pieces of concept art that showcased environments like that. So I'm very much looking forward to going to Felwinter's Peak and, and uh, you know, the Plague Lands. So let's talk about those locations because it kind of gave us a nice little breakdown of the new things that we can expect in Rise of Iron. Obviously, you've got a new campaign with a new story, new missions, and new quest lines. We'll also be seeing new co-op, so new raids, new and updated strikes, Patrols and public events, hopefully all made anew. Patrols and public events are something that I talk about constantly on this channel when it comes to Destiny. When I was covering Destiny extensively, you guys probably heard three or four videos of me just being like, oh, when are they going to make these not suck? So who knows? Maybe this is the moment in which they evolve how we uh, are able to participate in patrols and public events and make them just a little bit more interesting, if not quite a bit more interesting. But some of you are going to be most concerned about the fact that there is indeed a new raid. We got a small sneak peek at what is some sort of an enemy from the raid. It looked like a giant wall clearing like beast constructed by the fallen. It was on top of what looked like the wall inside of old Russia. It looked insane. Bungie didn't say much about it. And they do plan on revealing more of the raid alongside of more of Rise of Iron over the summer. They're also going to be at E3, they mentioned, so we're going to potentially see some stuff there, but pretty much expect them to do the same thing they did for The Taken King, where they had multiple streams with members of the community, YouTubers on to showcase different elements of the game. Now, The Crucible is also going to be getting an update. We're going to see new maps, new modes, 
uh, new features. They have said that they have a lot to say about the Crucible, and given the fact that the story also falls in line with Lord Saladin, the last remaining Iron Lord, and he, of course, is the Lord of the Iron Banner, you can imagine that he could potentially inflict and affect the way that we play traditional Crucible outside of the Iron Banner. Very excited. I've always enjoyed Destiny PvP, and I'm really excited to see what this new Crucible has to offer. Let's go back to those new locations, though. They've confirmed that we're going to be visiting the Plaguelands, Fellwinter Peak, and the Wall. The Plaguelands is an area in Old Russia that was locked off by the Iron Lords and the Vanguard because it was too dangerous and full of nasty, horrible things. Well, as it turns out, once we finally get to go visit it ourselves, it will be still full of nasty, terrible things because the Fallen have sort of made it their territory. They've used Siza, Siva to build new fortresses and constructs. It's going to be a gnarly place to be, and we've got a small peek at it with some art. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to going there. That was one of my favorite things about the Taken King was exploring the Dreadnought, going to a new location, and, uh, you know, that sense of adventure and exploration it's, it's deep inside my heart. It calls to me. So I'm looking forward to checking out these new areas. Now, Felwinter's Peak is the peak that overlooks old Russia. It was sort of used as a watchtower by the Iron Lords. We're going to be going to that. Crazy, you know, up in the mountains, snowy environments. Hopefully, you know, giving us something really fresh in terms of areas that will be engaging in combat. And it looks awesome. It looks, you know, old and rustic and ran down. It's going to be cool to go back and repopulate it as guardians with our friends and fire teams. The Wall is, of course, where we first started the game. The same place that Peter Dinklage's ghost resurrected us for the first time, and we took our first steps into the world of destiny. Well, we're going back there, and apparently it's completely changed. Not just like they made a tiny area where we get to fight some fallen. It's actually changed, and we're going to be going back to it. I'm really excited about that, um, because if you guys remember way back at E3 when they first showed off destiny you know they made it seem like there was a lot to explore in that area of the map and then we never got to check that out so hopefully uh you know there'll be some really substantial awesome areas to check out there we're gonna have a new landing zone i don't know if that's in the plague lands or what they're doing with that but essentially what we saw in the dreadnought something similar to that so you know, that's the idea of going someplace new there's gonna be new social space obviously and one of the things that i thought was really cool was they talked about you know an area that's sort of the shrine um, where the Iron Lords have had statues made in memorandum of them. And they said that we're going to be able to interact with these shrines in order to unlock quests and gear and stuff. They've also mentioned lore. You know, the idea that we'll be able to learn more about these lords themselves and, you know, develop and gain lore from them. Whether or not that's through the Codex or some in-game means, I don't know. Most likely through the Codex. But if they did start to deliver lore in-game, I'd be completely on board for that. So we'll see what that brings when we finally get our hands on the game. Now, of course, the big thing about Destiny, anytime we talk about Destiny outside of the new areas and the new story and the lore is the gear and the guns. Everyone wants the latest set of armor. And we're going to be seeing a lot of new armor and a lot of new weapons, very much in the vein of the Iron Lords. You know, some viking theme armor. We've also seemed to have uh, another gear set that looked very much, you know, sort of Warmind, almost, you know, Rasputin-themed with all the sharp like techy looking edges and then we saw a hunter wearing what seemed to be something trials of osiris and they did also briefly talk about the trials of osiris and its return and you know the idea that that will be making a comeback and we'll be able to gain more loot from it what i have to say is that every time i see a hunter with a new piece of gear from one of the expansions it makes me wish i really mained a hunter even though i know how beneficial my freaking titan is to my fire team and how they would not be able to make it without me because titans they're titans, let's be honest. All I know is that they have to make it up to us titans in one way. And what they need to do is they need to give us freaking cloaks. Lord Saladin's got one. Can I have his cloak? It looks old and tattered. I'm sure he can use a new one. I'll gladly take it. But seriously, Bungie, cloaks, please. Speaking of new crazy things, you guys may have noticed in the trailer that there was a sort of crazy two-handed battle axe. Well, as it turns out... This isn't going to be like the sword. You're not going to be able to craft it and carry it around and use it as a primary or a additional weapon in your arsenal. They're called relics, and they're going to work like the Scorch Cannon and Vex Temporary Shield did. You're going to pick them up as battlefield items and deploy them and use their insane power for a limited period of time. Definitely cool, though. I like the Scorch Cannon. It was a lot of fun. You know, the Vex Shield was a big part uh, uh, of the game and raids. You know, it's... I'm all for that, and I'm really looking forward to wreaking havoc with this giant two-handed battle axe that is also on fire. It doesn't get much better than that. 
So really, I mean, what we've seen here in the stream, the outline of the makings of a really great expansion. And if Bungie has learned anything from the Taken King, I can only hope and imagine that Rise of Iron will kick absolute fallen ass. Really looking forward to this, guys. Um, you know, I just... Bungie's one of those developers, and I know this is a really childish and foolish thing to say, but they seem to just always learn from their mistakes and improve. And as many people didn't enjoy Reach, I loved Halo Reach. It was one of my favorite Halos of all time. I loved the introduction of armor abilities, and, you know, it's just, they, to me, they always feel like they're evolving and moving forward. Even if everything they do isn't perfect, most of the stuff they end up doing is pretty damn amazing. And I love how Destiny has grown thus far, and I can hope that Rise of Iron just takes it to the next level. Like I said, I'm really excited about the atmosphere, the overarching feel of Rise of Iron is so on point for me. Um, you know, Destiny artists, or the Bungie artists working on Destiny have always been phenomenal. That shows through in what we saw of Rise of Iron. Um, you know, I'm hoping that they're able to back the game with an equally amazing soundtrack without the help of Marty the Elder, unfortunately. But these are all things to me that just, you know, make Bungie games so emotionally connective. Um, you know, not to mention the nostalgia factor for me as someone who grew up playing Bungie games since day one, pretty much. You know, I've always had a very soft spot right on the middle of my heart for Bungie. Um, you know, and they, they seem to just always put things together in the end. Like I said, I loved the Taken King. Um, loved my time with it. You know, a lot of people think just because I'm not still covering Destiny that I don't like it. I get that question all the time. Like, why aren't you playing Destiny? Do you not like it anymore? And it's like, I, I love Destiny, which is exactly why I stopped playing it after I ran out of things to actually do in the Taken King. I don't want to grind for the sake of grinding just to order, you know, just to gain some additional gear, even with the new update they did. Like, I don't care about getting, you know, like getting my light level maxed out. That, that means nothing to me as someone who doesn't run raids on a regular basis. Like, I want new places to explore. And that is what Rise of Iron is looking to give us. One last thing, guys. I want to say happy birthday to my good uh, internet friend, Destiny moderator and longtime subscriber, Fuzzle. Today was his birthday. Uh, very good timing for a birthday, Fuzzle. Especially as I know he is a hardcore Destiny fan. I imagine today was a great day for him. But once again, happy birthday, Fuzzle. Happy birthday, dude. Thank you guys for watching. If you have anything to say regarding the Rise of Iron expansion, your thoughts on it. If you checked out the stream, let me know your thoughts on everything that they showcase. What has you most excited? Do you have any concerns? Let me know down in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one.